At 6.43, time to have a look at the newspapers this morning. We'll start with the Sunday Times. It has a warning from Lord Cameron that Iran will be held to account. The Independent reveals a huge 50% spike in sex abuse cases against the police. Sunday Telegraph has a landmark on our hollowed-out armed forces. And the Sunday Express leads with a similar story. Is Britain's military too weak to fight a prolonged war? Uh, Labour draws up ultra-safe bomb-proof manifesto, the headline for The Observer. That's an interesting one. Mm. So, let's go through what is making the news today. Political consultant Emma Burnell joins us and social campaigner Winston Davies. Hi. And good morning to you both. Good morning. morning. Emma, um, you've been looking at the Times front page, basically, of what Lord Cameron's been saying. Yeah, um, so he's kind of sabre-rattling a little with Iran, who obviously... Iran haven't directly attacked anybody, but an awful lot of the money for those who have has yeah. come from and through Iran. Um, so he's been sort of saying, you know, we are going to retaliate. But the problem is there's a, a real tension between the need to, say, to try and stop them behaving as they are without going into an all-out war that I'm sure another story that we're going to come to will say we're not equipped for. And Iran's... Yeah, you know, they see the same news that we do. Well, we don't want to escalate. <laughs> we don't want to escalate. We don't want another hot war in... Well, another, another hot war in the Middle East. Um, and we don't want the UK and the US once again fighting in the Middle Eastern territories in ways that are very complicated. So, like, with the strikes that we've just heard happened overnight again, yeah. we're, um, we and the US are trying to hit targets that are indirect, they're not in Iran. So it's called a proportional response. Mm. Um, so instead of um, going so hard that they are incapable of coming back, but that, that they are driven to come back in a highly militaristic way. Um, they strike our oil tanker, we strike their military targets. Mm. Um, it's, it's been the strategy for quite some... I mean, you know, I, I remember an episode of The West Wing about this in the 90s, yeah, so... that's right. Um, but it's, it, the problem is, of course, that what that means is that things stay the same. Uh, tit for tat. And... That's probably, in real politic, the best we can hope for, but it's not great for anybody. Because we don't yeah. want all-out war, um, and apparently neither does Iran. 100%. They, they can't afford it either. Listen, I'm saying, how many, how many wars can we, can we be fighting all at the same time mm -hmm. oh, yeah. with our limited resources? Well, before? you've been looking well. at the Express front page, where we're not equipped to do it anyway, apparently. Yeah, there's a, um, there's a report that's come out from the Commons Defence uh, Committee basically saying that we haven't got enough personnel, we haven't got ill-equipped with um, machinery and, and weapons. Weapons. We've got more um, people leaving the armed forces than joining each year. Um, and, we, yeah, we're, we're, we're struggling as it is. Mm. There's been a poll put out talking about um, national service, um, most people think that... Well, 15% of people think that there should be full national service after the age of 18, and a third of people think there should be some kind of partial national service. So, you know, wh where do we go? You know, are we going to be dragging in 18-year-olds off the streets trying to, to go and fight wars all around the world? I mean... No, I mean, it's... I mean, the ridiculous thing is, I mean, look, the Select Committee doing what it's doing, but they, they could have asked any anybody, any soldier, 10 years ago... <sighs> and they would have given them the same answer, yeah. rather than spending all our money coming up with some sort of... Well, and it's also... ..which is a statement of the blooming obvious. It's so unattractive to be a soldier right now. You're not paid that much, particularly as a, you know, basic squaddy. Um, we've seen the, the state of barracks housing. Um, all of the things that would have once attracted you to that career have been denigrated and, and run down. Well, there are tank regiments without any tanks. Well, quite. Mm. At the moment. Um, but, I mean, even beyond the professional equipment, the other stuff that you were supposed to get that would make up for your poor salary, i.e. subsidised housing, a place to bring up your family, all of that is going and going and going and being cut to the bone. And then we go, oh, yeah, but please come and fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please come and but risk your life. We've allowed this to happen. We've sort of walked into this, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, my, my, my other thing about it is that if, if I was to be called up to, to be fighting, I would be questioning the reasons about why we're going to war. So 20 years ago, we said that Iraq had m weapons of mass destruction, destruction. It was found that it didn't. 
So, you know, how many lives were lost mm. going to a war, which wasn't, <laughs> was, wasn't told yeah, to be true? Yeah, that's not your job in the army. I know it's not, but you're going to go and lay down your life. And yeah. rightly so for, the, for this country, fine. But you want to know that the people that are sending you there are sending you for, for the, the truthful reason. And this is it, Stephen. If we bring in national service, oh, we're well. not then asking people who have that mindset of, I will follow orders, I understand what it means to be in the army and, and, and the chain of command. We're telling everybody, just do it without questioning. Yeah, but I tell you what, national service national is service not would... going to happen. No, it won't. No, well, in a million years. I don't think it is. And but... to be fair, the people in these, all these polls who say, yes, it's a good idea, bring it back. And, and not. not 18. No, they're they're well over the age where they'd be eligible anyway. It won't happen in a minute. No, million surely years. the answer is we just need enlightened recruitment <coughs> and more investment. It's money. Mm. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm afraid some of the gimmicks that they've put out in the last month or so, oh, you don't you can have tattoos and a beard. Well, tattoos and a beard's all very well, but if I'm living in a damp house mm. that's run down in a barracks in the middle of nowhere and I can't get my kids to school... Actually, it's a bad idea, It doesn't really matter what my face looks like. Beards are a bad idea, because it's part of the discipline. It's part mm. of the discipline mm. that you have to be clean-shaven, and if, you're not, you know, if you've got stubble, you're going to be hauled up about it when you're on parade and all the rest of it. It's part of the discipline, it's part I'll, of the mindset. I'll remember that next time I come in, I'll yeah, show you. Yeah, you make sure you do. <laughs> 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 but it is part, it's part of yes, the discipline, yeah. and it's important. Um, oh, Emma, let's have a look at good old Sadiq Khan in the Sunday What's Telegraph. What's he up to he's, now? He's, he's going to sting us, apparently, if you want to drive in London. Uh, yeah, um, I don't... It's the Telegraph. You don't believe it? Amazingly enough, I suspect the Telegraph has put a heavy spin uh, in this election year, for three months, four months, before the uh, London elections against well, the... Well, what are they saying that he's come up with? Uh, it's a... It's a a new way of interpreting some of the driving taxes that, that come through both um, local government, which is actually not Sadiq Khan, and, and London government within terms of things like the ULES and the, com and the congestion mm. charge. So, but secret technology, they say, that will charge motorists pay per mile road tax. Yeah, no, it's well, not happening. <clears throat> it's not happening? No. I mean, Sadiq Khan is hardly known for his pro car. Uh, He's not known for his pro car. Um, we have changed London quite considerably in terms of air quality, which is a good thing. But um, they're not going to. Uh, a, the technology we have barely works. Well, uh, and m most of his ULES cameras get knocked out. Well, they, they're, they're unfortunately you know, stolen. You know, um, I, are, yeah. I mean, it does make me laugh that we're going to talk about locking people up for vandalising, not even vandalising, sitting on a war memorial, um, and yet. We're also all in favour of them knocking out a whole load of cameras that are actually state property. Yes, but unjust, the, the scene is unjust. Well, other people might see the war memorials as unjust. Well, do we get to really? have that? But that's, that's the thing. Winston? When do we impose oh, Fight back, fight back. <laughs> um, look, I'm just, so, go down to the... You know, they talk about uh, jail for activists that are going to um, protest and climbing over war, war memorials. Um, Look, I feel there's got to be a level of respect. No matter what you believe or don't believe, somebody's given down, laid down their life to, you know, to have this, this memorial there. Um, but they're talking about jailing uh, people that, that climb onto these memorials. Now, the thing is, I think that's a bit of a gimmick. How is that going to be enforceable? Three months ago, they were talking about anyone that gets a prison sentence under 12 months is going to be not... It's going to be a suspended sentence with a community mm. order because the prisons are overcrowded. Now they turn around saying, well, if you climb up on top of that memorial, you're going to go to prison for three months. It's not going to be workable. Well, plus a £1,000 fine. Well, I mean, it's not, so going, to get, it's not going to get paid. So, if it's, so if it, even if it's a suspended sentence, it's a shot across the bows, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's something. But the thing is, here, here's my problem as a small L liberal. Look, I agree that I would like to see people respect those who fought in war. I'm, a, I'm not a pacifist, but I'm also not going to go to war. So I know that I have to give my respect and honour to those people who will fight on my behalf, right? That's my personal belief. But I know that there are other people with very strong beliefs that say that all war is wrong mm. uh, and should be outlawed completely. Now, there <laughs> yes. are... Yes. How? And, and they're, they're, well, well, indeed. That, but yeah. but, uh, but right. outlaw war. Well, well, I agree with you, but... And, and I think... They're that, entitled to their they're views. Entitled... That doesn't mean they can denigrate the memorials of those who've done But let's say we then built a memorial to one of those people and the whole of society changed and then they denigrated that memorial. The same law would apply. And what 
My basic principle is don't apply a law to people you disagree with that you wouldn't want to see applied if social mores changed and we said, actually, that's a register I, I wouldn't want to see us on. Yeah, but we're talking about people who've given their lives for this country. We are, and, you know, one you of the things they you, gave their lives be... for was our freedom of speech yes. and our freedom of expression and our freedom to protest. Now, if they are damaging those war memorials, that is in itself already a crime. I'm saying don't add an additional crime that just looks like you're grandstanding. Okay. I don't know. Don't you think we've got to do something in this country about respect? About uh, respect. nobody shows anybody any respect anymore. The way people talk to each other. You go on the tube or on the bus, people are effing and blinding all over the place in front of children. Mm. There's no respect anymore. How do you get the whole of society to learn respect? Do you know what? I think we double back a minute and talk about this national service because actually, right, look, I I've talked about it on this programme many times. 15 or 16 years ago, I ended up in prison because because I didn't follow the law and I got caught with cannabis, right? That period of 18 months that I was in jail taught me so much about following rules, about getting up for a routine, about following a system that enabled me to come out, turn my life around, build a business, put systems in place for other people to help them um, build their lives up. And actually, without us putting some kind of structure in place to give people, you know, the idea of knowing how to work in a system and then develop the, the, the um, discipline of respect, we are going to struggle going forward, going forward. I, and I agree entirely. I think you're absolutely right. And so it's, I'm and for it. I'm for national service. In some respects, national service, in that, in that sense, it would be a very good idea. Mm. But the chances of it ever being implemented in this country now are just about nil. Why do you think, why do you think it's nil? Because I think there'd be such an outcry from anyone under about 30. Do you, I think we'd get over it. We'd get over yeah. the outcry within a few years, don't do you think? think? I, I mean, lots of other European countries that are not dissimilar to us do have... A, a, mm. I mean, I think, for me, it would have to be a form of national service in which you could choose not to be military. Yeah. Well. Um, so, some sort of community service. Yeah. I'm not against the idea per se. I think it does give particularly people from... Like, if you make everybody do it... No opt-outs for the wealthy. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm off to Cambridge. I can't possibly do my no, national exactly. service. None of that. You know, and then you actually mix them up together so that people from Cambridge don't get to live with the, in their own yeah. little bubble. Fine. But I don't see us as a society organising that properly. I, well, I would sort of agree with you on that, but just in terms of, of knocking some respect into people, I think it would be I think we've idea. got to the critical point where we've just got to do something yeah. about it. We shall see. Let us know what you think. GBviews yeah. at gbnews.com. Uh, Winston, Emma, thank you. We'll okay. see you both a little bit later on. In the meantime, let's see what the weather's going to do for you today with Jonathan.